Hey there, this is Eric with Sunland Guitars, and today we're going to make two new pickguards. Um, on this specific guitar, it has uh, these two um, interesting pieces here. Um, we really only need one because the corners are kind of messed up, but I figured I would go ahead and make two just in case he doesn't like how the two line up together. So. Um, I got these are three ply so black white and black got a new sheet right here black white black um, the first step that we do is take tape masking tape of some sort and put it over top of um, the uh, the existing blank right here um, so we have the mat side down because that's the dent obviously against the guitar and um, you put this on the glossy side. I do not remove the plastic either. The plastic is still there. And the masking tape that I use comes in a big roll like this. And it is very low tack, um, just so that it's easy to work with. It doesn't mess up the finish on other projects that I do. So um, just so that you're aware, uh, I recommend, highly recommend this. But I also sometimes use just your standard uh, masking tape but it's a little stickier than what I want. Um, with the low tack, I am still able to remove the masking tape and keep the plastic on top of the pickguard until the last thing that I do is remove that plastic um, so that it all looks nice and shiny for the customer when they come pick it up, right? All right, so uh, like I said, we're going to start here. And the masking tape is so that we can see our outline. So we hold it down, and I like to kind of get it really close to the edge. As little that I have to cut out on the bandsaw, the better, is, is how I look at it. So um, give myself a little room because I'm not quite sure how far that needs. Looks like maybe a little bit more here. So get it kind of close to the edge, and we trace, hold down steady, and get a really, really precise outline here. Especially with uh, vintage guitars like this, um, it does have the uh, um, like sun marks from where the sun hasn't uh, you know touched the finish of the, the guitar, so um, it will be good to get it as precise as possible to the original so that it covers up um, those spots on the finish there. Um, so you do an outline and then make sure that you um, fill in or at least outline where the screw holes are. So those are exactly going to line up when you cut it out. So one done, and then we're gonna come in here with the second one. And, you know, you can kind of, uh, you know, if you're really worried about, um, you know, the waste and, and, you know, getting the most out of your blank, you can get it really close here. I don't have a scroll saw, which would be a little better. My band saw is kind of a cheaper one. Um, so I, I kind of want to just be able to cut it right out um, and not have to kind of zigzag through the design and, and mess anything up here. So um, I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. Really close, very precise outline. Press down, hold it down. You can also use tape to hold it in place if you like. That makes you feel comfortable. Solid outline though is um, also preferred so you can see what you're doing. Always double check, go back around, make sure that you've got a good solid outline. My pencil was running out so it looked like I didn't get a very good one that first go around so. Come back in with the screw holes, fill those in. 
Holding down very, very steady. Okay. Alright, so there we have it. Both right there. And um, I'm going to take this one and flip it. This was the one that was over here. And because this one was messed up, I'm going to flip it over and see if these screw holes line up from the other one. And I might be able to use as an outline and get a better idea of how to connect these two. They do not line up very well. So I'm just going to have to go point by point to get an idea of um, maybe just where this point is here. And then this one line up that curve. Just have to freehand it a little bit here. And there we have it. So it's about right. Next step, and um, I'll see you when I come back. We're going to cut out the outline, and then um, I have a little belt sander that I use to. To go through and um, <clears throat> well, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so here's my setup. Um, we're gonna take it on the um, bandsaw here and cut out the outline. And then this is a little rigid um, belt sander here. I love this thing um, because we have kind of a, a thick, um, uh, what do you call it? A cylindrical side over here and then a thinner one on this side but we also have the flat surface here and that gives me everything that I need to get that precise shape um, cut out and sanded um, for that for the outline. Um, so I'll see you when I get back with doing that. Okay, so after I got into it a little bit, I figured uh, let's show a little bit of the process with how I use the bandsaw and how I use the, uh, the um, <clears throat> belt sander. <laughs> um, so, I got this one cut out along the uh, outline here. Um, and I wanted to also mention that I do like to um, put the holes in first because um, the paper, the, the masking tape can move or it can um, kind of like pull up in this process. It did not on the, um, on the one half. So that was good. I was happy with that. But um, just out of um, you know a little extra cautionary measure, go ahead and pre-drill those holes in there first, so that um, you know that those are where they're always going to be. So uh, let's get into it with the bandsaw. <laughs> Okay, so what I just did there was I went in and cut relief lines, as you saw those um, direct cuts down into the curve. And what those do is it adds relief points to when you're going through and going through this kind of um, pretty um, heavy curve right there, it'll break out and allow you to adjust while you're going. So you can see how kind of close I am there to the line. Uh, maybe um, you can get the rest of it with um, either a belt sander or sandpaper or a file that I'm going to get into in a little bit um, after this process. But 
Um, you just want to get kind of right up to the line. You don't even really want to touch it with those relief points. And even when you're going around and cutting that out, you don't really want to touch the, the pencil line that you drew. Um, you're going to end up going through that line with either a file or the belt sander. But let's keep going on it. All right, so uh, we have our outlines cut out. They aren't exact. 
exactly the same, but um, pretty much the gist of it. Um, and the good thing with these is that it's pretty close. Like um, being exact isn't um, completely necessary for these, but when you're dealing with pit guards with uh, pickups or around the neck pocket, like you do have to be um, a lot more exact, right? Um, but I mean, eh, I don't wanna play it off like I'm not doing a good job, but uh, these are pretty damn good. So the next step is to take these curves and make sure that they are very, very smooth and perfected. So um, we, I do a kind of a mixture. So first step is I like to use files. So I like to use something like this first, um, rounded side and flat side. I got a couple other flat sided ones. Um, a triangle one if you have to get into corners, cylindrical one for getting into, um, I don't know, some of them are really intricate and they have uh, loops and really interesting curves. And then something like this might be it too, um, flat side, curved side. I very rarely use like the rasp, but um, for the flat sides and uh, or for the uh, more fine detail stuff, that's what I like to use. So. Um, but this is my go-to because I, I can go back and forth on it. Um, but you want to do stro like big strokes here and smooth out any bumps that might be going on. And you just kind of feel with your thumb and go back and forth and you might go back and forth with the file like this. Just to get smooth strokes, big strokes so that it really wipes out any um, any of those bumps. And then coming into the curve, I use the curved side. And you see, see how I'm going back and forth, switch direction. These big strokes kind of smooth over the tops of those bumps so that, um, you know, if you're digging in back and forth, you're gonna create more bumps. But if you're just going lightly, let the, let the file do the work, let it do its job. And you just kind of go lightly and just think about skimming off small, small layers of, um, of pit guard material right here. And just smooth that out. Switch directions, go back and forth a couple times. There we go. Switch back to flat when you get to another curved area. There we go. You just come at it from different angles, different sides, see what works for you. Really find problem areas and work them out. Just takes time, takes patience, don't rush it. Let the file do its job. There we go, that's more like it. This is actually perfect in here because it was pretty much right along the same radius as the um, belt sander. Work out a little area here, curve that out. It's good there. And uh, it's also good, this one is not very pointy, um, and probably to give it more of that vintage look, I want to get rid of the points. So using the file to come in here and round out some of these is gonna be preferred because I don't want to make it look too new being such an old guitar that it is. So just round off those points. We'll clean them up later. You can do this with the belt sander too, but sometimes it takes a little, a little more off than what you want. And really just going off of this was and making sure that you follow your outlines. There you 
get off <laughs> some of those little bits there. All right. And then I'll do the second one. Okay, so next up, we are going to put a bevel and on these, uh, there is a beveled edge on every single um, side and curve, everything on this. So um, this is where it gets really kind of artistic um, and making sure that we are very consistent with the angle and um, the smoothness. And this is very, this is probably the more intricate, tedious part of this task um, is, is getting that bevel on it and making it look really, really nice. And um, I'll show you how to use the plies to um, make it, um, you know, use them in your benefit to judge whether or not you're on the right track. So uh, once again, I'm going to go with the curved, like uh, half circle in here, uh, flat side and curved side, because you're gonna work in on the curved side on stuff like this, but you're gonna use the flat side on curves like that. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to start right here. I'll try not to get too much in the way, but I'll, I tend to get really into these things and uh, I might uh, block your view, but um, we'll go ahead and get started. So we'll just kind of dig in. Remember, let the file do the work. You don't have to push hard. You don't have to rush it. Just let it do its thing. See that it's finding the, um, the white. So we're getting through the black and into the white. And then we're going to want the bottom layer black still. So we're really trying to create this first section here. I'm trying to get to where that first bevel and the edge that we want. So we know where to stop. I think that's the key here. Um, get it to a point where we're happy with it. And um, judging off of the originals, you really didn't see a whole lot of the bottom layer of black, um, but I'm gonna give it just a, a hair probably into there. But um, the thickness as it goes, um, as you can see, the, the bottom here is very thick. The white and the black um, are about the same, and then that top level of black is actually kind of thin. Um, but we kind of want to go and make these look as even as possible. Hold your file at a steady angle so that everything is consistent. And this is, that's probably what takes a lot of experience and practice is just knowing that you're holding the, the file at the right angle at all times. So. And you want to go technically until there's no flat edge um, on that bottom one. You want it completely beveled all the way to the bottom. Uh, I mean, you can play around with it, but um, ideally, I from what I believe, that's where you want to be. Is that there's no there's no more vertical edge. It's all beveled from top to bottom. So get down and kind of look and see when you hit that spot. But you want to make sure that you stop there because if you go too far, you're going to cut into the outline, right? And we want to leave that outline so that, um, you know, we don't, we cover up what we're supposed to cover up or we don't have any big gaps if we have to be really precise. Letting the file do the work. Nice and easy, working our way into the area we were just at. And um, this isn't the last step. So with the file, we are getting it to a point. Um, we're get, we're just, we're getting like probably 
80 to 90 percent there with the file and the last step is um, is a razor blade so um, get it close get it we're just taking off most of the meat with the file and we'll clean up some of these other edges and inconsistencies with the razor. There we go. Okay. So you can see there, pretty close. If you look straight on, it's about there. It's about where we want it. Getting consistent, but like I said, we're gonna finish up with the file. So um, I'm gonna get to work on this and meet you back here. Um, when I'm all finished, show you the final product before we hit the razor. All right, here we are. Uh, I'd call this done with the file. If you look closely, you can see some of the lines are still a little jagged. Um, the paper kind of over is that. So just gonna cut that off so we get a good idea. So you're really looking at like that white line and looking how kind of like smooth that is. And you can tell it's not quite there yet, but that's okay. Cause like I said, we got one more, one more step. And this is the part that blew my mind. I didn't know that it, this was that easy, but it's like, well, how are we going to finish this up? How are we going to finish that bubble up? Uh, well, we are not going to sand it not sandpaper, um, no more little files or anything, just this little guy, just a razor. Um, I take a razor and I kind of bend it a little bit cause it works, um, you know, you use like that little point there to kind of scrape other stuff. So I use this for a lot of repairs, but I'm um, gonna use mostly just the, like just where you're not gonna use really the point, you're just gonna use these edges here. I sand it flat just on a piece of sandpaper and just to get it flat, um, no real, sharpness to it nothing um, but so we're going to just start scraping and same thing just let it do its work um, the files put you know some deep scratches in there and you're gonna find out real quick whether or not you created a smooth beveled edge or not um, because you'll see that um, your beveled edge probably isn't getting all smooth you'll have um, a lot of the time, like the beveled edge is supposed to be an edge, right? Sometimes it's bent out like it's curved because you were kind of working that file back and forth and creates a rounded, so a rounded kind of surface. So you want it to be straight at an angle. And that's what we're doing here is it's knocking off that kind of middle roundedness and getting rid of all those file marks in there, creating a smoother line with surface here there we go I don't really know if it's coming through with the camera or not but I kind of come through and take off some of the um, little stubby things that are hanging off on this side or on the bottom edge there we go Kind of back and forth, back and forth, letting it do its thing. And it just smooths it right up. Makes it shiny, smooth, all that stuff. And that's pretty much it then. So, I don't know if it, you can really tell the difference or not, but no more file marks, heavy scratches in there. It's all nice and smooth. And that's essentially the finished product. I'll keep going over it and, until it's nice and smooth line. I'll show you how to countersink the holes and what that means uh, if you don't already know, but uh, I'm gonna finish up these lines with the razor and countersink and then we will install it there we have it a nice smooth 
smooth edge all the way around with scraper and uh, like I said it's a good idea to just come in on the back side here and just take off any of that um, you'll feel it like you'll definitely feel like there's just an edge that'll run around there so make sure that you hit that up to get those off of there um, but lastly we countersink so uh, countersink is that bit I use this all the time. This is one of those things that I think a lot of people don't use. Um, obviously you see it on the pick guard, but a lot of people don't use it on the actual wood. And um, I, I, have, I think I have like a little short or something or a video that maybe I'll post again explaining why it's good to countersink pretty much every hole that you drill into the guitar. But um, we definitely countersink these um, because rarely ever anything is uh, flat. So um, we want to be able to get that oval to sink in and sit nice and flush. So always make sure that your drill is at a 90 degree angle, completely perpendicular from the surface. And you'll go down and you can always add more or less as you go. But as you can see, nice little countersink in there. Uh, and you're essentially just creating that beveled edge on the inside. I don't know any better way to do it than with an actual countersink bit, so um, definitely go out and get yourselves one. But this one's almost done, and then it'll be ready to install.